right, guys, today we're going to talk about the Mitch Rompala book. This is by far one of the most famous controversies within the hunting world as of right now. It's probably safe to say every outdoorsman knows the words the Rompala book unless they just kind of live under a rock. No way. So if you want to hear about a guy arrowing and allegedly fabricating a potential world record deer, or if you just like controversies, then let's get into it. So this controversy began on November 13th, 1998 in Traverse City, Michigan, when Mitch Rampala supposedly flung an arrow at what would easily be the new world record. This buck would have beaten the Milo Hansen buck by around five inches. Mitch's buck would have allegedly scored 218 and 5 eighths, while Milo's buck taped out at 213 and 5 eighths. Mitch said the buck has been on his radar for about three years before he was able to harvest it. To make the story even crazier, he claims he had an encounter with the deer about a week before but missed it. But on that second encounter, the stars aligned and he felt it was a good shot but still chose to give it more than enough time to expire, like a good hunter should. So in the meantime, he drove back to his house to get his video camera to film the recovery. Well, when a person shoots a deer of this caliber, there's always a lot of question about whether or not it's real. And I think that's good in some ways, especially when dealing with a possible new world record. So as you can imagine, when the news spread about this massive deer, people started asking questions. And with that, a lot of accusations came up. But before we dive into those, let's take a look at the history of Mitch Rampala. Anyone in Michigan who knows Mitch personally says the man is obsessed with whitetail hunting. And that obsession has led him to take many trophy deer primarily with his bow. With harvesting a Missouri state record when he was almost 10 years old and having at least 13 bucks in the national record books, it's safe to say Mitch has always known how to find them. So with him being known as an impressive hunter, it wasn't crazy to believe he actually harvested the new world record whitetail when the news finally got around. But as certain pictures started surfacing, accusations started to fly. Those that were skeptical were questioning things like antler discoloration, distance between the burrs, and honestly, just how perfect and symmetrical the rack looked. But out of all those, there is a particular photo of Mitch holding the monstrous bug and its ears look very droopy, which made people begin to question if that was the result of a skull plate being tampered with. But if you ask my opinion, I still have mixed feelings about all this. During my research, I found there were other accounts of people allegedly harvesting bucks in Michigan that had a similar wide frame and very droopy ears. Now, I'm by far an expert, but I really don't think this proves anything on either side because there were people claiming the deer was faked just due to the location the buck was harvested. Historically, Traverse City, Michigan had not been known for its giant whitetail, yet alone a 218-incher. But that's the thing. These giant deer like this, I believe, are just anomalies. They are so rare. Even in those dream states like Kansas or Iowa where there's a 150 incher behind every tree or whatever else those experts say on the internet. Anyways, I guess what I'm questioning is why couldn't a deer of this caliber be hiding and surviving in the shadows of Traverse City? According to a deer and deer hunting article I read, there were three official scorers, Gary Berger, Lee Holbrook, and Al Brown that all taped out Ron Paula's buck and they all said everything looked legit. Gary Berger, who had over 10 years of scoring under his belt, said, I felt it. I inspected it. It's real. Lee Holbrook said, the rack is real. I touched the skull plate and examined it, and there was no evidence of anything wrong. Al Brown agreed with the other two scorers, and I read that he had seen the buck the day after Mitch harvested it. He said there must have been at least 15 to 20 people who had seen the buck at Mitch's before I even got there. The scoring session was also said to have been filmed and photographed, but I have yet to find the video while researching. Mitch being the very private person that he is, basically disappeared whenever accusations kept getting thrown his way which just added fuel to the fire for those people that called him a fraud. So with that, he basically decided to not show anyone the buck because that's not why he hunts. And he got tested when two people from Michigan allegedly offered him $10,000 to x-ray the buck's rack and skull plate to see if it was real or fake, which he turned down. With Mitch refusing to enter his buck into the Boone and Crockett record book, it left a lot of people wondering if Milo Hansen's buck was actually the world record. And with this, there were more than bragging rights at stake. In the hunting industry, having the world record whitetail can bring in a pretty penny through endorsement deals and having the buck on display at outdoor shows. Well, Milo was seeing a drop in show appearances due to the rumors of the Rampala buck being the new world the record. So allegedly Milo Hansen and Mitch Rompala signed an agreement of some sort asking that since Mitch will not have his buck inspected, he will not claim his deer is bigger than the Hansen buck. 
For him to not officially submit the buck, that seems a little fishy to me, because at the minimum, why wouldn't you want to silence the skeptics? But I can kind of see where he's coming from when he allegedly told people this isn't why he hunts, and he doesn't want to show people the deer anymore because of that, and in a way, I respect that, but that's also a very good excuse to kind of back away from the whole situation if the deer was faked. Nowadays, what Mitch Wampala has been up to and where the buck's antlers are is a question many have asked. According to multiple online forums, Mitch is still hunting and harvesting giant deer. The immediate years following his 1998 buck, it was said on online forums that Mitch ended up taking seven bucks from 1999 to 2002, with the rack sizes varying from 140 inches to 198. Which is just insane to think about someone harvesting deer of that caliber so consistently. Especially since they were all taken in an area that again wasn't known for those deer. Which as you all could have guessed those bucks following his potential world record opened up the can of worms once again. But there were some people who thought this helped prove his case. Meaning since these other monster bucks he harvested came out of the same region of the state. Why couldn't his 218 incher be real as well? On the other side people were saying the antlers were fabricated just like his big buck before or that they were pin raised deer with the same genetics. Their argument was all these deer had a very identical super wide frame that just doesn't seem natural. Now there are multiple pictures of these bucks floating around the internet that was said to have been pulled from a website that was thought to have been created by Mitch himself, but that is still unknown. As for the world record deer in question, from what some people say, the deer mounts and antlers were destroyed in a house fire. But some still believe that the buck is hanging in Mitch's home for only him and close friends to see. As for me, I'm pretty torn because on one hand, you have a very well-known whitetail savvy hunter who has proven he can harvest giant bucks. But on the other hand, he basically went into hiding when too many accusations got thrown his way. From what I've researched, I believe Mitch Rompala is very knowledgeable about whitetail and was honestly ahead of his time when it came to hunting. Listening to video clips of him speak about deer behavior and about how much time he spends scouting, I feel even the most seasoned hunter can learn a thing from Mitch. And it's really no wonder why he has a wall full of trophies. But I just can't get past why he didn't have the deer inspected and officially scored just to put an end to all this controversy. Or why he allegedly signed that agreement with Milo Hansen to stop saying his buck was the biggest. The pictures, sure they seem a little fishy to me, but I don't think that proves the deer's fake. Because if it's real, that's an enormous deer of the most rare. So it's probably going to look a little weird to us. So to conclude, I don't know what to tell y'all. There's so much information wrapped around this one deer that we may never know what's fact and what's fiction. Even with all the time I spent researching, I can't say which is which. This buck may be real or it may be faked. We may never know. If you guys like this kind of content, be sure to give this video a like and hit that sub button and be sure you ring that bell notification if you want to be notified when we post videos to help you shoot deer like this. Nonetheless, let us know in the comments what controversy you want to see next and most importantly, Jesus loves you.